Where are you going? Uh, conclude just now is Japan versus France um, away in France. Um, Japan winning at the at the end one nil due to a uh, goal by Shinji Kagawa. Um, sorry for my actually I'll put my glasses on. This will be better. All right, that's better. So I the game started at six a.m. my time, so I wasn't able to I I woke up when the game was about twenty five minutes in. So. But you know, apparently not a lot of not a lot happened to begin with. Apparently, France were in control, um, and what from what I saw in the rest of the first half, France seemed in control. They had more possession, um, and Japan were just sort of waiting for the counter, and it wasn't really coming the chances. <clears throat> and at halftime, Japan only really had one chance, which was I think a half an hour header. Uh, Japan started with Honda on the bench. Um, and Uchida was on the bench, and Sakai was um, starting at right back, um, which was interesting. I wasn't sure why, but Sakai did a decent job, so fair enough. Um, at halftime, there was no change. Um, the France kept were holding the ball for longer periods. They um, they seemed more likely to score, to be honest. Although, yeah, um, Havana was. A problem player for us. He was, as in, not in a bad way. He he was anonymous, and his touches were all terrible, to be honest, all of them. Um, <laughs> and he was very, very slow. Um, from what I heard, the French commentators were uh, getting stuck into him. I'm sorry I look like this. This is like six a.m. in the morning, so I'm going to sleep straight after this video. Um, but then uh, Zach did his two first. First two substitutions, which was um, Hasebe on for Hosogai and Nakamura. No, sorry, other way around. Hosogai on for Hasebe and Inui on for Nakamura. Um, and with this, Kagawa went into attacking midfield and Inui went on to the left. Um, Hosogai, I think it was, it was commendable to see Zach put Hosogai on. He was. Um, Hasegai did a very good job. Hasegai, I don't think, was terrible, but he looked like he was tiring a little bit. Um, Inui for Nakamura. Both Inui and Kagawa uh, uh, both worked together very well. Um, and Kagawa had his first sort of decent game in um, for Japan in a long time once he moved to the centre. After, after half-time, and more importantly, after those substitutions, Japan were... Um, looking more and more dangerous, getting a lot more chances. Nagatomo, Inui, and Kagawa, those three in particular, were really our danger players. <coughs> um, and it was it was really sort of end-to-end -end stuff. It was quite interesting to watch. Um, Ribéry came on for France, and he, he looked very dangerous. He beat Sakai on a number of occasions. Um, but Sakai did an all right, okay job against him. Um, it was luckily, luckily Japan were sort of um, usually double mark the opposite winger if they have time. Um, hmm. um, I think um, key to Japan's possession in the second half was Hosogai. He was running like a madman. So was Nagatomo. He was m man of the match, I think. And towards the end, Uchida and Takahashi came on for Sakai and Havana. Um, I don't think there was any real reasons. I think it might have been because Zach was thinking to see out the game at 0-0. But then um, after a few amazing saves by Kawashima, who was, who was also brilliant, um, big break away from the corner, um... I think it was Connor. Connor ran up the field. It might have been Kagawa, but I think it was Connor who ran up the field, laid off to Nagatomo, who first touch sent it straight back into the box, and Kagawa put it away. And one 0 in Japan got their first win over France ever. So it's very nice to see. Um, last time Japan travelled to France, I think they lost five 0 and last time Japan played France, they lost two one. So, um, so yeah, it was a it was a 
good performance in the second half. I think they just seemed to have a little bit more courage in the second half. Um, pleased with how they managed without Honda. Um, half an hour was again a problem, but you know Maeda was out, and um, so was yeah Maeda was out, and Tadanari Lee's not really back to fitness yet. Um, it would have been cool to see Hisato Sato play, but I don't think he was really a chance at playing given the type of forward Zaccaroni usually uses. But I think it's about time Japan start looking for a different player than Havana. Just because that, I don't think that was really good enough. <clears throat> Defense was very good. Yoshida and Kono were brilliant all night. Um, there was a little, there wasn't too much danger at set pieces, even though I was a little bit nervous. Um, so I know all in all, it was that was a very good performance. Very, I think, slightly historic performance, seeing as it was their first winner against France, and in France. Um, I know there's not much to say to me. I'm a bit slow this morning. I'm six a.m. <laughs> so yeah, next is um. Uh, Brazil in Poland who and Brazil just came off a 6-0 win over Iraq um, um, with Kaka being put back into the team Japan will surely be a sterner test but the, um, um, I don't think Brazil will be quite as content to just sort of have possession as France were, they didn't really threaten I don't think they threatened as much as they could have with that much possession in the first half so, yeah, that'll be interesting to watch. Um, and But more interesting than that, actually, or just as interesting as that, would be the World Cup qualifiers that are going on the same night. Um, Australia play away, well, not away, to, in Qatar against Iraq. And um, Jordan and Oman play. I'm not sure where. Um, so the outcome of both those games will mean quite a lot for the group. If Australia don't pick up any points against Iraq, I'd say that they should, may as well consider their third place aspirations finished. Um, mainly because they've already they've already dropped points four out of six points. Oh. They've only gained one point I should say from the two like sort of theoretically on paper easiest away matches of the group. And all they have left is this Iraq game and away to Japan. And on top of that, they dropped two points to Japan at home. So I don't think... If they don't pick up a point, I'd say they're fighting for a third. And that will be further um, if reinforced if Jordan get a win against Oman. So, um, sorry this was a really rubbish video. I'm just a bit tired this morning. I'm about to go back to sleep. But, yeah... Um, Put your comments below. I think um, France were they just they really they just lost it on really the the one time when they really kind of fell asleep on the counter because um, Connor had acres of space and it was a it was a bit of a I think it was about four on three situation <coughs> attacking the French goal and Japan were good enough to take it in the end. So yeah, I'm pretty pumped. So. I'll see you in a few days' time.